records. These are pictures from the, the final night that Hong Kong had one last independent pro-democracy newspaper. The newspaper was called Apple Daily. They had their offices raided by hundreds of Hong Kong police officers. Police officers took their computers and their hard drives and their documents. They had the, the, the newspaper then had their, their assets frozen so they could no longer pay for any operations or pay any of their employees. And after all of that, as their executives and journalists started getting arrested one by one, they shut themselves down. As the staff of Apple Daily prepared the last edition of that newspaper last month, Hong Kong residents gathered outside in the rain. They turned on the flashlights on their cell phones. The journalists inside the offices would see that they were out there, would know that they were there for support. The journalists turned on the flashlights on their phones, too, to signal back to the readers in the rain outside. On a normal day, Apple Daily's print run was about 80,000. For that final issue, they printed one million copies. People lined up for hours to get one. And they were sold out entirely by 8 a.m. That was last month. That was the last day. Apple Daily doesn't exist anymore. President Biden put out a statement in support when they were shut down. I said in part, quote, independent media play an invaluable role in, a resili in resilient and prosperous societies. Journalists are truth tellers who hold leaders accountable and keep information flowing freely. That is needed now more than ever in Hong Kong and in all places around the world where democracy is under threat. He said, quote, Beijing must stop targeting the independent press and release the journalists and media executives who have been detained. The act of journalism, he said, is not a crime. That was last month from President Biden when the last independent newspaper in Hong Kong, Apple Daily, was shut down. And I just want to show, show, show you one thing from some of those pictures that we just showed from the night where they were preparing their final edition of that last free newspaper. There's a guy in a striped shirt, black and white striped shirt in a lot of those photos. It kind of seemed like he was the, in the center of the action in a lot of the photos that were taken that day. That's because he was the editor-in-chief of Apple Daily. And so these photos show him leading his staff and finaling the edit on, on the last print edition that night. Again, that was last month when they published their last edition. This week, he was arrested. He and another editor and two editorial writers from that paper were all put in jail yesterday and the day before. The court revoked or refused their bail, and then the court adjourned until at least September 30th. So those four journalists are looking at at least two plus months in jail until their cases even get heard, um, all for the crime of being journalists. The U.S. State Department put out a statement in response saying, quote, we strongly condemn the arrest of Apple Daily's former editor-in-chief and others and call for their immediate release. The U.S. is deeply concerned by the Hong Kong authorities' selective use of the national security law to target journalists and independent media organizations. The charges of conspiring to collude with foreign forces to endanger national security appear to be politically motivated. The U.S. is concerned by increased efforts by Beijing and Hong Kong authorities to wield that national security law as a tool to suppress independent media, to silence dissenting views, to stifle freedom of speech. We call on the authorities to stop targeting the independent press. Efforts to stifle media freedom and the free flow of information not only undermine Hong Kong's democratic institutions, they also hurt Hong Kong's viability as an international business hub. And that international business hub point sticks out a little bit, I know, but it's important in terms of the way the Biden administration is approaching this. Last week, the administration put out a warning to U.S. companies advising American companies that if they are doing business in Hong Kong, the political climate is changing there to make it basically unsafe for commerce and also sort of unsafe, period. That warning went out from the Biden administration to U.S. businesses last week. With statements like we've seen from President Biden and Secretary of State Tony Blinken, the U.S. government is obviously no longer calling the press the enemy of the people, which is a nice change. The U.S. government is now trying to both insist on the rights of journalists around the world, and to a certain extent, they're trying to model that behavior within the U.S. government itself. The Justice Department this week putting out new rules that limit the ability of U.S. law enforcement to go after journalists and their communications and their sources. That new rule put out by Attorney General Merrick Garland this week, and that is welcome. But if we are once again trying to lead the world in standing up for these kinds of freedoms, it, it's not working. 
What else can we do? Hong Kong democracy activists are now asking for the United States to once again offer them asylum in the United States, to offer Hong Kong democracy activists asylum in the United States, which is not an unprecedented thing. The U.S. did that after the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1990 under President George H.W. Bush. Now, as democracy activists and the free press and civil society in Hong Kong is being hunted and picked off one by one, could the U.S. offer asylum the way that we have in the past? Who, who would be against that here, right? But if we are going to lead here, and the Biden administration seems like they want to and they're not afraid to, what else can they do? What else should they do? And what kind of fight should they expect to have over those measures?